morning and welcome to St. Philip's as we gather to celebrate the Mass of the second Sunday of Easter. We welcome all of you who are in your homes and joining us for this time of prayer. And it is appropriate that we celebrate it in St. Philip's, the Apostle Church, because he was one of the group in the upper room in Jerusalem, one of the witnesses of the resurrection. He was there when Jesus came among them and said, Peace be with you. He freed them from fear. He freed them. He freed Thomas from doubt. And he frees us in moments of loneliness in our, isola in our isolation. And we open our hearts as we welcome him on this day. So we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your face. On this Divine Mercy Sunday, we ask forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we remember especially in this Mass, Julia Joyce Martin, Joyce's mum, Margaret Lane, Pat Lane's mum, John O'Connor, Frank O'Connor's dad, and Sylvia O'Driscoll, the Consul General Robert O'Driscoll's grandmother. And we pray that they rest in peace. And we also remember those who are ill, John Collins and Michael Irving Novato. Let us pray. Almighty God, give your church the grace to proclaim the power of Jesus, risen Lord. We have received the first fruits of his grace. Prepare us for the full revelation of his gifts. We make our prayer through Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. All came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favour with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory and honour at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, whose sins you retain or retain. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. 
Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the things I received recently was a postcard that had at the top of the card ten simple stars and at the bottom of the card these words were written. Perhaps they are not the stars, but rather opening in the heavens, where the love of our lost ones pour through and shines down upon us to let us know their souls are at peace. And the caption said, Eskimo legend. It just made me reflect on these days on all the people who have died from the coronavirus, who have not been able to have the full church and Christian burial. They have not had the opportunity to have the Lord pray and intercede for them through the holy sacrifice the Mass. And indeed it goes for all our families and friends. But today's readings, they connect us to them through our faith. And Peter said, Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Christ from the dead. And in Peter 1, he said, The goal of your faith is the salvation of souls. And we do need the assurance of the witness and the faith of the apostles. The group in the upper room were made up of the apostles and other disciples and family friends. They were living, we are told, in fear. And Thomas wasn't with them. Thomas was out and about. He was the practical man. He was one of the younger ones. He was doing the grocery shopping. He was listening to what was being said on the street about the rumours of the resurrection of Christ. And he was also listening to see if there was a movement to kill all of the friends of Jesus. 
he came back to his friends and he was still not believing that Jesus had risen from the dead. He was always the one to come up with questions. We know that when Jesus was giving a talk before, he said, you know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas said, hey, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And again here he said to the apostles, his friends, you know, I'm not going to believe until I see the nails that have made marks, where the nails have made marks in his hands and his feet, and I can put my hand into his side. Until I see that, I will not believe. And then Jesus comes, he stood among them and he said, Peace be with you. And Thomas, he said, come here, put your hand here. Look at the marks the nails have made. Doubt no longer, but believe. And Thomas said, my Lord and my God. It was a profession of faith that reaches all of us. It's the new birth and the hope that Peter speaks about. It's the reason for our faith, the reason for our trust. And Robert Browning's poem, A Death in the Desert. The last of the Apostles, John, is dying. He looks over his life and wonders what will happen after the death of the last person to know Jesus personally. You know, what will happen? And Browning said, when there is left on earth no one alive who knew, saw with his eyes, handled with his hand, that which was from the first the word of life, how will it be when none more can say, I saw? So how can the church preach the risen Christ in a compelling way when we haven't seen? Today, Jesus, he makes the connection or the bridge between those who saw and those who did not. He said, happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. Without the apostle seeing and believing, there would be no faith. And that is why we affirm in the creed one of the marks of the church. We say the church is one, it is holy, Catholic and apostolic. We have no experience of the physical presence of Jesus and our understanding of him is linked through generations of Christians and believers back to the Apostles themselves. You know, it's a great chain of faith which is linked to the person of Jesus himself. So you may think the chain gets weaker the more it is distant from that early church from the moment that the Apostles witnessed the resurrection resurrected Christ but the spirit which Jesus gives us is the life of the church and it enables each of us to have a living relationship with God a 
It allows us to call God Abba, Father. And with generations, we profess our faith in the resurrection and the life of the world to come. And that is why I think that those words from the Eskimo legend that the souls are at peace and that all those that we know have prayed for who have died in our time we know that they are at peace because the Lord has truly risen and appeared to the Apostles. And now we will continue with the prayers, special prayers of this Mass. And we have important things to pray for. We turn with faith and trust in the presence of the resurrected Christ and offer our prayers through him. Christ our light is alive. May he shed abundant Easter light on all his people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Christ is the light of his church. May he strengthen her and give her courage in her mission. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Christ is wisdom for those in positions of authority. May he bless those who serve us in public life in this time of uncertainty. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Christ is hope for those who serve in hospitals. May he bless and protect them in their daily work. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray all who direct their energies to rescue, to rescue us from the fear of the coronavirus. May the Spirit of God inspire and enlighten each step they take. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Christ is the life of the life. Christ is the life of the faithful departed. May our deceased loved ones see him free. May see him face to face. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for John Collins and Michael Irving. Father Jerry O'Rourke and his sister Noni, that they may get well soon. We pray for the repose of the soul of Julia Joyce, Margaret Lane, John O'Connor, and Sylvia O'Driscoll. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we entrust to you our prayers on this second Sunday of Easter, knowing that you are with us always, through Christ our risen Lord. Amen.
sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good of all this holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but at this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Salvador, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember your servants whom you have called from this life, Julia Joyce, Margaret Lane, 
John O'Connor and Sylvia O'Driscoll. Grant that they who are united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Philip, Thomas, Peter, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. We now pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Saviour gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. His kingdom, power and glory, yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
hand and feel the place of the nails. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just thank you to all of you who have joined us this morning to celebrate this Eucharist. I encourage you to look again at the readings and think of how Thomas made that tremendous act of faith and how he will inspire us each day. It's always good to keep smiling. You know, a man went to the doctor he said, I don't know what's wrong with me. My right ear is always warmer than my left one. So the doctor looked at him and he said, I see the problem. He said, you need to adjust your toupee. <laughs> you know, there's nothing worse than a bad toupee. <laughs> Now, this is one for the school, Mary, uh, the teacher said to little Johnny, Johnny, if you had $50 in one pocket and $100 in the other pocket, what would you have? And he said, teacher, I would probably have the wrong trousers. <laughs> anyway, Thank you again. Thank you, Michael, for coming up and being with us. Rona for doing the reading. And Mary and Celine for their beautiful music. And I know they're going to lead us out in song. But first, we extend God's blessing to all of you. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. We go 